Hi, everybody. I am just thrilled today because we have a special edition of Bronx Talk for you. We are at the brand new $95 million, 52,000 square feet nursing, education, research and practice center at Lehman College. Where the first cameras in here, you're going to get a first chance to see what is going on in this absolutely gorgeous brand new facility. They'll be cutting uh, the ribbon later this week. It is now my pleasure to welcome the uh, Dean, and I want to get it right, of uh, Health Sciences, Human Services and Nursing, uh, Dean Elgoria Harrison. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for inviting us. And we are so excited about having this ribbon cutting that's going to happen this week. This has been a long time coming. Really appreciate it. Well, that's that. what I wanted to start with. Mm -hmm. At what point did Lehman College say, we should have a nursing facility like this one? Well, I can tell you that the nursing facility or the nursing building has been in the works probably for the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years wow, or so. Wow, that's a long time. It's a long time. Uh, but, you know, it took a lot of uh, convincing a lot of stakeholders um, that we really are uh, in need of the, a nursing center uh, in the Bronx. And we were able to convince a, a number of stakeholders that this was a worthy investment. And. Coming after the pandemic, I guess that was a, a very big moment. And you said, well, wait a minute. Now we really are underscoring the importance of nursing in the Bronx and, of course, everywhere. And here you are finishing this after the pandemic when we really need to load up our uh, health uh, industry with great professionals. Right. And so thank you so much for saying that, because, you know, the Bronx really deserve a lot of attention in terms of the health care. We, we have a the health care industry is one of the biggest industries in the Bronx. And as a result of that, we are prepared to actually be able to train or educate the next generation of nursing um, faculty. We have a great uh, nursing student body. Um, so once they are graduated, once they pass their NCLEX exam, they are prepared very much to be able to take on those roles uh, in hospitals here in the Bronx. One of the things that we're going to do, which we will be going downstairs and, and seeing all, all the, the facilities, mm -hmm. I was very impressed in the volume and the number of students who are going to be able to participate. As the dean of the entire uh, area, um, what, what are the programs that are going to be taught here and why is this facility so important uh, to all the students who are going to get that chance? So the nursing students are, are going to be our primary target for, to, for training here in this particular building. That's what it's designed for. The nursing simulation lab is going to be really instrumental in helping us to really train the next generation, just because it's the state of the art. It's the most modern um, facilities, the equipment that we can actually have. And, and so that is actually going to be good because many of our nursing students and faculty have an opportunity to be able to see what it's like in real life here on this campus before we actually send them to clinical. And they'll actually be able to do because we're, we're going to see, and, and folks have in there because we're about to see uh, something real special. The facilities are amazing. So you're going to introduce me now to somebody special, right? Absolutely. Ladies we're going to introduce it. my drum roll. Exactly. Dr. Campbell likes to be called Nora, and I have, for the, her dean, have been so struggling with her first name. Uh, but Dr. L. Nora Campbell is here. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Dean Harrison. Thank, thank you for joining us. So we're going to go downstairs with you, right? Yes. All right. So we will see you later. Thank you thank for your you time. Thank you so much. Really appreciate and that. And we're going to have a great time. Let's go. Here we are in the nursing skills area of the a brand new nursing building at Lehman College. This is really exciting because this young lady is uh, not well and uh, the nursing students can take care of her. Yes, they can. Um, this is an example of one of our mannequins uh, that will be used in the nursing skills lab here. There, there are 25 of them. 
Yes, there are 25. Amazing. And they're all uh, variations. There are male, there are female, there are older adult. Uh, and so, um, you know, it's a variety representing the demographics of the Bronx. People of different ethnicities Different of well. different ethnicities. And, and so um, what, what can you do? I mean, apparently they can take blood pressure. What, what yes. can students do here? So this mannequin, you can program it to, to uh, have different readings of blood pressure for heart rate, heart rhythm, uh, for different breath sounds, like somebody had pneumonia, what that sounds like when someone's having asthma problems, we can program it for that. So program it for that. The, the nursing student comes over and says, what, what's the matter, has to help diagnose it, and then, of course, treat the patient. Right. They would have their stethoscope, and they would be listening to the different breath sounds, uh, and then identifying them appropriately. They would also be using, uh, a, you know, the blood pressure cuff in order to check on the patient's blood pressure. It would give a reading. And, um, and, and I'm seeing here there's, there's a, a terminal, so I'm assuming they can take blood and, and they do all could, those they, they could at some point do that. Um, one of the other features is that you probably don't notice, but there's a little slit in her throat here. She didn't get attacked, but it's for this mannequin, <laughs> um, we can do, um, if she had a tracheotomy, we could do that, and they could learn suctioning and care of a patient who had that. Um, we can do checks on the pupils because the eyes can move, the pupils can dilate, they can expand, contract. Um, can, can somebody say, oh, I'm, it hurts or I'm not feeling well or something like that, and then yes. the nurse has to deal with that? Yeah, we do. Uh, we are able to uh, program the mannequin, um, and the mannequin can speak. They can say different things. Someone in the control would, would be doing that, but they can moan. They, you know, they can, you know, they, they can, can do what we all do they, when we're in the hospital. Exactly. Uh, uh, one, one of the things that I think is incredibly exciting, and, and we'll, we'll get some pictures of it, up on top of each bed is a camera. Um, it's, I guess it's a security camera of sorts, but it's really an educational camera. Talk about what that is used for and how that's going to play. So when the students are here and they may be doing a simulation of a case for this particular patient in a small groups, then they can um, do what they're you know, that would appropriately be doing for the patient. And then what that could happen with the camera is it videotapes it so that after the scenario is over, they come back into a classroom and they discuss the case and they see what they did right and, they, they and can, how they can They can improve. look at the video of them doing it. So uh, I was told that, like, you could even simulate a heart attack. You can. That, that so, and then a, a nurse would, uh, or the student, would come into the room I'm, and, and have to identify what it was and then, of course, act in an emergency situation and get the patient taken care of. Right. They could, they could, they could identify an arrhythmia. Uh, and one of our other rooms in our ICU area has a cardiac monitor. So that we, Which we, we will uh, look at that in a moment. Um, what are the um, nursing programs that uh, Lehman College provides and what students will be using this particular lab? So in this lab, it's primarily going to be used for students who are learning to become registered nurses and get a bachelor's degree. Um, and we have uh, several ways of coming into that program. We have an, a, a traditional program. Those are for students who uh, probably don't have a degree. And we have a lot of transfer students who come in and they are at Lehman and they are you know, they want to be registered nurses with a and, bachelor's and I degree. I want to add to that, wait till they realize what this is and the opportunity they will have to really not only learn, but to do uh, in, in, in this room. Um, for you, what, what makes this and, and this particular uh, skills lab particularly exciting? Like in terms of the teaching, now you've been teaching nursing, but not with this kind of facility. No, our facility that we have now has mannequins that do many of these things, but we did not have the space. Right now, we have a tremendous amount of space. We have about three times the square footage in this particular area that we have in our current location or the one that we're moving from to. And so it gives the students and the faculty an opportunity to move around and the students have an opportunity to, to practice. They don't have to wait a turn to get to practice. They have an they opportunity do to do it and then another person do it. And it can be videotaped while they're doing it. Let's just talk numbers now. So you've got the 25 in here. 
um, and, and of course all the other facilities, you have a lot of nursing students already, right? Now let's just talk about the program and the growth of the program. Right now we have in our undergraduate program, we have over 200 students. We also have an online RNBS program for nurses who got an associate degree, are practicing as registered nurses, and coming back for a bachelor's degree, because that's really what the field is requiring, that you have a bachelor's degree in order to uh, stay in nursing. All nurses, registered nurses, have to have a bachelor of science in nursing. Uh, among the things that I think is exciting as a, a, a member of the general public is then you'll have greater, if, if, if the nurse is trained at Lehman College, you'll have greater confidence that they know what they're doing when you're in, in this uh, particular position. We will. Uh, students can practice their skills here safely. They can practice a scenario safely under the supervision of the faculty. Here's the place where you can make mistakes and they're corrected. Now, please before, don't, before please you don't go do out it when you get to the, the hospital. hospital. That's right. right. Exactly. So part of the time they're here with the skills and the simulation and the other part of the time they're in the hospital. So they go back and forth. They're not just here with mannequins, they're also in the hospital with real people. I think that's, um, um, and, and you know, I, I don't know what we can show you uh, because this will be, of course, uh, live. I mean, it's not operational right now, but to me, it's just getting the opportunity to individually, as a student, to individually interact with the patient. And as you say, make mistakes. We're gonna to try to keep the mistakes here and not as, as they go forward. Uh, what have you heard from students in terms of what they're thinking about this? Uh, on Monday, a group of students came in for the first time to see the building and- um, They were blown away. They were, they were awestruck and their excitement was really contagious, and I was just really happy to see their surprise and happiness, and you know, they were very, very excited. These are our senior students who were here, and they wanted to know, are we gonna be in this building? And I said, yeah, you're definitely gonna be in this building. You told me off camera about, for you, as a, as a not only a former practitioner, but of course, as the chair of the nursing program here. This is pretty exciting for you, isn't it? It is. It's very exciting. It's been a long time with um, our former chair being instrumental in having this happen. Um, and, you know, just making sure that we got this building. We've been planning it. And I think the exciting part, too, is that faculty were in on the design of the building. We said what we wanted in the building. We spoke with the architects and they came through and did an amazing job on um, the lab area. Um, all of the spaces, our classrooms, um, just really, really spectacular. We're going to meet one of those uh, designers later on in, in, in the program. Uh, I, I have to tell you, it, it's just incredibly exciting. It makes me as a Bronxite feel much more comfortable about going into, God forbid, into a hospital and having a problem. Um, I, I hope you'll be well. Listen to whatever the nurses and doctors tell you. Um, you know, we can even get a little privacy. If I get privacy, we're going to cut off the camera. We can even get a little privacy in here and close, close the curtain. Um, really, these are actual hospital beds fully equipped. What, what are some of these things here? So when patients come to the hospital and they need oxygen, so there would be, we don't have the equipment here yet, but for the tubing, but will and be. it actually delivers oxygen if you, but some are on room air. There's suction if we needed to suction the patient. There's, um, you know, just Literally any, everything that you, that a nurse would need to do in a hospital room. Yeah, it's, it simulates the hospital. Um, um, some of the things across the hall, you see a sharps container if patients have, uh, you know, get medication and it has to be disposed of properly. Wow. Um, that's there. So it's just like a hospital. It, it is. And we're going to see another part of the hospital in just a moment because we're going to go to the ICU, which is not only one room you're going to see. Every student's going to get a chance to really do. We'll, be, we'll do that in a moment. So this is the ICU in the uh, Lehman College brand new nursing building. Uh, the chair of the nursing department, tell us what are we looking at right here? So this is a mannequin uh, that uh, is just uh, simulating Simil an average similar to patient, the other one. similar to the other one. And as explained before, we have you know patients of 
uh, mannequins of different colors, different ethnic groups. So this is depicting this. This is a male mannequin. The other one was female. <clears throat> um, you know, some of the features are the same. One of the differences here is that there's a monitor and um, a monitor next to each bed. Monitor next to each bed, and that monitor what once the mannequin is hooked up to it, would um, simulate his heart rate, his respiratory rate, his blood pressure, all that would be on this screen, similar to how it is in a real ICU. And then that could be changed so that if, God forbid, there's an emergency, I say, God forbid, I guess it doesn't really matter to the mannequin, but if there is an emergency, then uh, the nurse would have to figure out how to, how to deal with it. Yes, they would. Um, it also can simulate uh, if an EKG leads were put on, it could do that too. But right now it's heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure for the patient. One, one of the things that and you- And oxygen saturation level. One of the things you mentioned to me, uh, which we didn't talk about in the other, is that this uh, uh, port in, in the arm is not only for taking blood, but you said they could do, you know, do an IV and run an IV through here and be right, taught they how could, to do they that. They could run an IV through there. Uh, we have the- Hooks here, the pole, uh, but, but you know we don't have the uh, solution here. But, but yes, you but will that have is that eventually. I mean, we realize we're here at, at, before the building is even open. Uh, and uh, you were also telling me about this whole process on uh, this part of the uh, of the room. This is the medication administration card, and it simulates a real medication administration card where. Uh, the patient with well, a mannequin would have on a, a, a ID band. It would be coded, and then it would also pick up codes with a scanner, similar to how you do at the supermarket. And um, then the um, machine um, would open up. And, and then it would, identify that the right patient, in this case, gets the right medication. Gets the right medication. Is that what they do in an actual hospital? They That's do that in an actual hospital. And so his medication drawer would open up and allow the nurse who's administering medications to go in and that would be that patient's medication only because it would be double checked with his ID band with him. The third one would be to ask the patient, but if the patient isn't alert, then we go using the ID and uh, that's a There are check. actually, I mean, we're here in one ICU, uh, but there are actually eight rooms uh, they're all going to be the same? So the other rooms are called medical surgical units. So they're single bedded um, units for adult patients. And so uh, those are around in this area. And they they simulate how uh, a regular uh, ICU would be, which is typically a single bedded room with all of this equipment that's in it, the medication cart, the monitor, and any other treatments that the patient would need. I think what that means is the nurses not only will be able to treat more routine uh, ailments and il illnesses as we did in the nursing skills, but then in here, obviously the uh, imperative is heightened and they'll learn how to do that as well. When they get hired, they'll be able to work anywhere. Yes, yeah, so this area is for more complex patients, patients with more complex health problems. And so, you know, our students would have that opportunity if they didn't necessarily have it in the clinical area, they would have it simulated here. Uh, is, is there um, a difference uh, in what these mannequins will, ailments and other things, what these mannequins would have versus the ones in the nursing skills room? They, they have a little bit more. Um, Complicated Com issues. Uh, areas yeah. where it can be programmed for these mannequins in here compared to the ones in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in terms of um, which students will get to do which, do all the nursing students get it? Or is it uh, according to, uh, you know, what, what uh, program they're in? In other words, where does this fit in the academic uh, instruction of, of, of the So students. the students who are in our RNBS program, they don't have this. They're already practicing nurses and have right. had those experiences. Okay. The students who are in our accelerated bachelor's nursing program, our traditional bachelor's program, who are not nurses, they would have these experiences. The first year that they come in, they'd be in the area that we were in before. Uh, with the patients are not complex, but they could have a little more. And then in the next year, they would have uh, opportunity to have an experience with patients who have more complex health problems. The other thing which, you know, we, we saw in there where there were 22 or 25 mannequins in there. There are eight rooms in here. 
the capacity to, to grow the program effectively without saying, well, we want to bring in more students. The need out there in, in the community is obviously that we need nurses. Uh, but you'll be able to say, we can not only bring you in, we won't have 10 people standing around a bed. You'll each be able to really get hands-on work. I mean, that's, that's, that's really, it seems to me, the bottom line of this whole facility. It is. The students would have opportunity to have more experience. And one of the things with the skills is that the more you do it, the better at it you get. So students can come in and practice um, with it, where there's a little bit of a challenge where we are now because of limited space. Yeah, but, but that's going to change very soon. Uh, wh one of the things that uh, we didn't uh, specifically address is because so now the opening of the building is February 1st. Yes. That's when we're, they're cutting the ribbon. Uh, when will this be fully operational uh, and ready for students to come in and actually use these uh, incredible facilities? It's a phase. So throughout this, this is our spring term semester. Right. Throughout this spring term, um, the company, which is Lairdall, who uh, we've purchased the mannequins from, are giving us different, giving faculty different training sessions. Because although we have our mannequins in our old building, these are brand new mannequins and they're a little bit more sophisticated than the ones we have. And so learning how to operate them and to operate uh, the control center for simulation uh, requires some more training and, for and the faculty. One of the people who, while I was walking around said, these are very expensive. These are thousands of dollars They each. are. They are. They're extremely expensive. Uh, and, 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 and so there's certain care. Uh, the, one thing which maybe the, the, the audience noticed, I'm, I'm wearing gloves and you made the point because when we got here, I was kind of touching it. And so this is twofold. Number one, obviously nurses now have to wear gloves. And so this helps them uh, learn how to use their hands with the gloves, but also uh, you can't really keep the grease from our uh, everyday fingers and the, the dirt from the outside. The last thing you want is to bring germs in here, I guess. Right, right. Our mannequins are sensitive in that over time with so many people touching them, which our students would have to do, the oils from our body gets in and can damage the mannequins. Wow. I mean, it's all been incredibly well thought out. I like the idea that you told us in the other room that faculty uh, really had input into it. What, what did faculty say that maybe the people designing the building didn't realize or maybe you didn't realize? What was the kind of input that they gave? We had um, monthly meetings with the architects really? um, towards the, you know, in the beginning to say what we, they said, dream. And they said, just dream about what you wanted to have in this building uh, in terms of the skills. And so, because faculty have been working with students in skills lab and in the hospital with patients, they wanted it to really simulate, to really look like the patient care area. And so all of the little things and big things that we need um, and to transfer here from the hospital, that was incorporated. And, and we should mention uh, the concept, which I was just thrilled with, with these cameras above is, let's see, two cameras in here. This is all the same thing. That's going to be the, the, um, uh, the, the system that you use to teach students. Yes, yes. Fascinating. Okay, what, we're, the, other, the other thing, there are many things here in this building, but another thing in this building is the maternity ward. Yes. Uh, you ready? Are we going to deliver a baby or something? Well, we're, we'll we're see that. Do that. Yes. Okay. We are in the maternity ward, and I guess this woman deserves a little congratulations because I, I realize that the mannequin is pregnant, but she did have a baby, and we're going to see the baby in a moment. Uh, uh, Nora, tell us a little bit about, about the maternity ward. This is, this is really a special thing, especially with the dialogues about uh, maternal mortality in the Bronx. Yes, it is. So uh, as we know, the maternity mortality rates of women of color is very, very high, and it's high in the Bronx of, as well. Um, so this mannequin um, is actually on now, and you can we, see we can her see breathing. That she's breathing, yeah. But um, with the pad that <laughs> she, you, she's really breathing, folks. With the pad that you have over there, oh, yeah, let's, let's show um, that. 
it can, it's a little computer, and so it can be programmed for different breath sounds with her breathing. It can also be programmed for her to begin to have contractions and then to actually deliver the baby. So we, the students uh, will see that. Not all of our students, when they go to the maternity rotation, have an opportunity to see uh, traditional uh, delivery of the baby, some see a cesarean section. So, and, and you'll be able to simulate that so, here. So uh, we can't simulate the cesarean section, um, but we, but the, the regular d delivery, um, we are able to see uh, of the woman deliver here so that they would have an opportunity to do that. So then they may want to see it again. So they may also see it before they go to uh, delivery, labor and delivery. Typical, typically, and that's really happening this term, typically the faculty that take the students to the maternity unit come in and do a, a first day here in a simulation in the lab with a, with a mannequin right. and go over some of the things to evaluate on the woman before she has the baby, while she's in labor, and after she delivers the baby and with the newborn. Well, and what an extraordinary assistant to the uh, doctor uh, these nurses will be because they'll know exactly um, how to do it, how to prepare the woman, how to talk to the woman. Again, we've got cameras all over the room. Uh, it's just an extraordinary opportunity to do this right. Yes, yes. And, and so now there, there's a baby. She, she had a baby earlier today, folks. So this um, is an isolate, and uh, this is something we never had in our old building either. And so this isolate is just like an isolate that a newborn baby would be placed in and then taken to the newborn nursery after delivery in the delivery room. And it can also be programmed the way you would program an isolate with its temperature controlled and humidity controlled, and that's how they are controlled in the newborn nursery. That, I have to just interject, that is so important because you can say, okay, well we have it, but they've got to know how to operate it, and you've got the latest equipment that's being used in, you know, in all the hospitals in the Bronx. Yes. It's fantastic. Go ahead, uh, tell us more. So, you know, that's just what this um, is. And so you can see the baby there. This little white thing sticking up is supposed to be simulating the umbilical, the umbilical cord. cord right? That would still be on for about a week or so after the baby's born. And, um, you know, the bottom things are things where you might keep disposable diapers and other things like that for the newborn baby. Um, you know, and then there's some other... Um, um, you know, so that's pretty much what is done for the baby. And, and I have to say, I did notice that there was a, a, a stuffed animal toy there for the, for, the, for the baby as well to keep the baby happy. Yeah, so, um, you know, we probably wouldn't use it so much for this age baby, but, you know, it's there. Um, and it's, well, it's kind, kind of, of, kind bright, of nice. brightens up the room. Right. Well, what are the kinds of sensibilities that a nurse would need to have in, in the uh, maternity unit compared to what they may have in the nursing skills or even in the ICU? Well, uh, I think therapeutic communication. Uh, women are in uh, pain. Significant when pain. They're, when they're delivering. So I've heard and, and seen. Um, a lot of women have uh, an epidural, so they have a medication that's administered so that it numbs the area and the pain is minimized, but it's not gone altogether. And so, um, you know, that would be given by IV drip to a woman. Um, and that's pretty stand, it's pretty typical. Some women may opt not to have any medication right. at all, but most do. And then, um, you know, how to help the woman with breathing um, so that she can relax during the contraction. So all of that is constant communication with the woman and then monitoring her labor. When women are in labor, that would also be something on the monitor. On the when monitor she's having here, the contractions, right? the students can see what the contractions of the woman is. They can also hear what the fetal baby that's inside the fetus, they can hear what the fetal They'll heart be able to rate do with is. The stethoscope no, it would show up on the it machine, would show up, show up on, on, the, on the monitor. Wow. Right. So um, all of those things the student would be able to see because that's something that they see in the in the real labor. And, and you know, I don't want to, I, I focused on it a couple of times, but I don't want to keep coming back to it. What is incredibly significant here is that communication piece and the fact that because you're going to be, you know you're dealing with somebody who is in severe pain. I hate to say it's normal, but it is what happens all the time in, in, in childbirth and being able to 
comfort the woman, encourage. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not a nurse practitioner, but I'm assuming those are the kinds of things they have to learn how to do uh, behaviorally as opposed to even clinically. Right, right. So those are some things. Uh, sometimes women, if they're going to have a cesarean section, have a catheter put in. Um, it's kind of standard. So students would be able to learn how to insert how that, to that also. Wow. Um, uh, you know, so that would be part of it. It, it really is extraordinary. And, and what we said over in the ICU is we're not only training them to do the basic things that take blood pressure and even run an IV, but we're training them to really be practitioners of of the uh, you know the, of being of being a nurse. Yes, yeah. It, it must be, as I said earlier, it must be real exciting for you to be able to say, "Hey, we're really going to do this," as opposed to simulated or all those other things that you've had to do in the past. Right. So, you know, this is really a good way for students to get practice and then when they go in um, and see it. And one of the things, too, is because labor and delivery take a long time, uh, depending on when students are in the clinical area in maternity, they may see a woman in labor, but they don't get a chance to see the delivery. Or they see the end of the delivery, but they don't see the process of the earlier. So with this, they can get to see, of course, speed it up, but they would get to see what happens during the different phases of labor uh, and how to respond to the pregnant I, I, woman. I can't help but notice that she actually is, <laughs> is actually breathing here. So then they could take the stethoscope. And, and of course, all the technology would measure the heart rate and everything else. It's incredibly exciting. Um, and, and again, what, which students will get to, to, to participate so in this? So our students uh, in their second year, first semester, uh, typically have uh, half of their rotation is in maternity and the other half is in pediatrics. So in uh. pediatrics, they take care of sick children. And in maternity, they take care of women in labor and the newborn. Again, I, I just keep thinking about you and the other faculty members. It must be just an absolute because I know that you really love your your uh, you know your craft and and what you do. This is really an opportunity to really teach it and know that students will develop with real skills. Yes, it is. We're really it's excited. Pretty about excited. It. Okay. The the other thing we're going to go into is this full apartment, so to yes. speak, and and it's got a whole different application. So we're going to do that. And, uh, and so come along with us, that's where we're going next. To me, this is one of the most ingenious places, even though from a technical point of view, it may not be that sophisticated, but it makes a ton of sense we're in an apartment. Why are we in an apartment in a training center? So this is called our Activities of Daily Living Room. And we're in an apartment because most older people are not sent to nursing homes, which a lot of people think. They go home from the hospital. And then they go home and a visiting nurse comes to see them in see the homebound patient or a family nurse practitioner will come and see the patient in a home situation. So it just makes sense for us to have it. And our, you know, we want to have our students have a holistic experience of patients in the hospital as well as in a home setting. And so there's a kitchen. Uh, as you can see, we are sitting in the kitchen, uh, fully equipped. I mean, if it's going to be equipped in the hospital room, it may as well be equipped in the kitchen. But then what I thought was also fascinating, the bathroom is a large bathroom. So there's room to move about somebody potentially in a wheelchair, somebody with special needs. This really gives students, again, that practical application. It does. And even if uh, they have a patient that um, is in the hospital, they need to know what kind of environment the patient is going to go home to. And so this is an idea of, you know, this is a typical apartment. Um, you know, most people in New York City live in apartments. Some people do live in homes, but living in an apartment and what it's like to take care of a patient and what are their patient's needs as a transition from the hospital into the home setting. And, and teach them, again, 
if, if maybe they're uh, physically, their, their motor skills are not great, teach them how to cook or how to deal with various issues they may have, you can actually simulate that here. Yes. Well, and you can also get a bite to eat. That's another story. <laughs> This apartment's nice. You mentioned a wheelchair because um, the patients and their family, they can come through here with a wheelchair. It's easily able to get into a kitchen with a wheelchair. A lot of patients, uh, a lot of older adults are in wheelchairs, and not just older adults, the special needs um, with the motorized wheelchairs or with the manual wheelchairs they're in here. Uh, you know, they're, they need this kind of environment. Uh, you know, I would say how many of us have a relative or friend uh, or even uh, us ourselves are in that circumstance. I have a friend who's in an assisted living area and he, he, he's been through a, a lot medically, but he has a nurse with him. If that nurse was trained here at Lehman College, I think she does a great job, but if she was trained here at Lehman College, she would really know how to be comfortable. Which um, uh, students in, in, the, in the curriculums will get to participate in this uh, facility, or does everybody get a shot at it so they are at least familiar with it? Well, one of the things <laughs> is that uh, students would get an opportunity to do this in their, they could have an opportunity to do it in their uh, second semester that they're here, um, and they could have it again as seniors as part of before they graduate. This, uh, this apartment it, uh, activities of daily living can also be used for students in our advanced practice program, so our family nurse practitioner program, or even our pediatric nurse practitioner program, because a, a lot of nurse practitioners do house calls. Um, they go to the home and they see the elderly in their home environment. And, and the emphasis now, if you can avoid going to a senior center, most people want to, as they get older, want to be in their home. They certainly don't want to you know, lose their home. And so giving the general public a better opportunity to stay at home when they're in potentially that condition is better for all of us. It is. It's lower on the cost of health care. It's better for the patient and their family. Uh, and it's a good opportunity for our, our students to see what it's like to care for people in the hospital. In the hospital, you have all this equipment and supplies and yeah, everything. But you don't you have need. that here. You don't have all of that in right. the home. You have some of it, and how do you adapt to it? Uh, Dr. Nora Campbell, thank you so much. Congratulations on the new building. We are uh, going to leave you, but we're going to go to another facility. We're going to talk a little bit about the design of the building and the administration of the college. But uh, again, congratulations. You just must be thrilled. Yes, and thank you for the opportunity. Oh, sure. Listen, this is what BronxNet Television has been about for all these years. So um, thank you so much. Uh, we'll, um, we're going elsewhere. We're going to meet with some other great people. We have just seen an incredible facility. It is beautifully laid out. It is spacious. It is the great way to teach students how to be nurses. And uh, one of the uh, designers of this uh, project is um, Bridget Van Sloan, who's a senior associate at Urban Arch Architects. Congratulations. Thank you so much for putting this together. You must be thrilled. Yes, it's been a really long time coming. I've been on this project for eight years. So now that the eight faculty years. and students can move in, I'm beyond excited for them. And what went into designing this and to looking at what was a very empty, it was nothing, and you turned it into this spectacular facility? So we really looked at what the surrounding buildings, you have Carmen and Davis here, and they're old, beautiful buildings, but we really wanted to highlight that this is a state-of-the-art facility for the nursing students and the faculty, so we try to modernize it as much as we could with making homage to biophilic design and that nature is healing so we have a lot of natural elements, a lot of natural light coming in here. You'll see lots of greens and woods, um, stonework. So we really tried to make as much connection to nature as possible for the students because it's a very stressful program. We wanted to create areas of respite for them. And, and uh, we're standing in front of some beautiful artwork yes, that yep. is included in the building. What about the technology um, and, and the rooms that are hospital rooms? How did you figure out how to design those? So we worked with our lab planner and we really tried to emulate a hospital environment as much as we could. You have a lot of uh, 
state of the art, different types of um, head walls and different types of spaces that students would actually see in a real life hospital. So everything that you see down in the basement, that is what you would see in a hospital. What I am really hoping is, oh, I don't know, six months, a year when it's fully loaded with students and activity that you'll come back and get real pleasure out of what you were are really central to putting together. Oh, I hope so. Thank you. Thank you so much, and thank all our friends at Urban Architects. Thank you. Thank you. Let's bring on the provost of Lehman College. It's my friend Jorge Silva Puras. Um, Mr. Provost, uh, this is really exciting, isn't it? Extremely exciting. This is one of the most important projects at Lehman in, I would say, over a decade. We are very excited about the inauguration of this building. It's going to be fantastic for the students, for the staff, and for the faculty. You have about a thousand majors, as I understand, um, which is about the same as the psychology uh, programs. Um, but this really sets the health program at Lehman College up for growth, doesn't it? Well, the facilities, as you saw, are state of the art and allow for growing the programs, particularly in our registered nurse to bachelor degree. I think we could possibly even double or triple our enrollment. Wow. That's going to be fantastic for the Bronx. For the city of New York, obviously, you know, there's a big need for nurses. And I know what you're very, very interested in is upward mobility for the students. One thing you didn't say, it's going to be big for the Bronx, it's going to be big for healthcare. But the students themselves, when they come to Lehman College to study nursing, will do better. Absolutely. One thing might, that might not be known widely is the fact that we at Lehman are the number one college in all of New York State in terms of promoting social mobility. And one example is nursing. Think of it in terms of what the tremendous effect it could have on the income of an entire household. You could, a registered nurse who passes the NCLEX and has a bachelor's degree, could start a salary of seventy dollars to $80,000. That automatically catapults that family to a different income level. And needless to say, the need for nursing is, and nurses is, we've been talking about this for yeah. years, especially in the Bronx. Healthcare is our largest industry. Lehman College now is going to be, has been, and is going to continue to be uh, central to, to serving that need. Not only that, we also are a Hispanic serving institution. A good number of our students, including our nursing Very students, are bilingual. And many of our patients in the Bronx are also bilingual. So the need uh, serves, serves that population as well. Jorge Silva Puras, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulate President Delgado from us at BronxNet Television. Thank, Thank you, you so you, much. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you to all the people who participated. We will see you next week.